Welcome to episode one of the screencast series on getting started with the JSP wrappers for Kendo UI. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the installation of the wrappers and show you the basics of how to use them. I'll look at a couple of the JSP controls that the Kendo UI wrappers provide by adding some widgets to a web page, and finally, I'll populate a widget with some data using the Kendo UI data source. To get started, all you need is your favorite IDE with support for JSP, of course, and at least version 1.7 of the JDK. I created a simple dynamic web application that has a single index.jsp page. To use the JSP wrappers for Kendo UI, I first need to include the Kendo UI JavaScript and CSS files for my download, which I could just copy into the web content directory of my project. I also created header and footer tags. The header contains all of the necessary CSS and JavaScript files so that I can use it again across multiple pages if I need to. Next, I need to include the Kendo UI tag library from the taglib folder of my Kendo UI download. All that I have to do to get this jar into my project is to drag the file to the lib directory in the web info folder. When it prompts, I have it copy the files to the directory. At this point, I could just run the application on my locally hosted Tomcat server and check it out in the browser. Now that I've got all the right assets in all the right places, I'm ready to start using Kendo UI in the index page. Now note that I'm not going to do anything fancy with JSP or use a framework like Spring, MVC, or Struts2, or anything else. I'm just going to write simple JSP pages and illustrate how to use the Kendo UI wrappers. For your production apps, you will definitely want to stick with the framework that your team has chosen, and the Kindle UI wrappers will fit right in. In fact, the Kindle UI demos that come in the download use the Spring MVC framework. The JSP wrappers for Kindle UI provide a tag library which I can include just like I did the header tag. Once I reference that tag library, I will get these Kendo tags that I can use to interface with Kindle UI. It's important to note that the JSP wrappers are wrapping the configuration of the controls. I'll talk about this more, but to start with, I want to show you how easy it is to get a control in place. A calendar control, for example, can be created simply by using the Kendo calendar tag and giving it a name. That little bit of code was enough to create the calendar, but what's really going on here? How did that JSP code create that Kendo UI calendar? If I do a view source on the page, it will show me exactly what the server sent me. As you can see, the server did not return the full HTML layout, CSS, and JavaScript that it takes to visualize the calendar on the screen. Instead, it only produced the JavaScript that was needed to use the standard Kendo UI calendar. And this is ultimately what the wrappers do. If I inspect the element, we can see what the page looks like after Kendo UI got done with it. You can see that our simple calendar tag is now some HTML with CSS classes. This is an important point to understand because once I start dealing with the data sources for the controls, I've got to remember that I'm not iterating a data source on the server in order to render HTML. Rather, I'll only be configuring the data source that the JavaScript controls are going to use in the browser. To illustrate the point about generating client-side JavaScript, I'll build a drop-down list with a data source to populate the list. The data for the data source will be an in-memory array of items for right now. We'll take a look at connecting to data on the server in later episodes. First, I'll build a simple generic list of strings. This will be the data that shows up in the drop-down list. Then, I'll create a Kendo UI drop-down list. Inside of that drop-down list, I'll create a Kendo UI data source and set its data attribute equal to the Java string list variable. Now, I know what you're thinking. I said I wasn't going to iterate and render the control on the server, and that's true. It's not going to do that. What it is going to do is to convert this JSP list of strings into a JavaScript array so that our browser will understand it and be able to use it with the Kendo UI drop-down list. When we refresh the page, we have a populated dropdown list. Now, if I look at the source for the page, I can see the server sent down all of the JavaScript that I needed to get this dropdown list up and running, including the array of items that were serialized from the JSP list into the JavaScript array. As you can see, the JSP wrappers are very simple to work with and they fit right in with the page HTML. 
You also have the added benefit of getting validation in that you will get a descriptive error if your tags are malformed so you don't have to wonder what happened or what went wrong. And what I've shown you here is only the first step in taking advantage of the JSP wrappers. There's a lot more to show and a lot of features that can be facilitated through JSP, including the configuration of remote data sources, lazy loading of hierarchical data, server-side paging, custom editors for grids, and a whole lot more. In the next episode, then, I'll take a look at what it takes to create a Kindo UI tree view with data from the server and have it lazy load the data hierarchy when a tree node is expanded.